Hi there, I'm Alexander Griffin, owner and CEO of Dream Quarter Productions. Today's video is going to be kind of informal because we're going to be doing a filmmaking gear demo video. This is the Sekonic L398A Studio Deluxe 3 Analog Light Meter. I'm going to go through the features of this thing and how it works. Everything the audience sees on the screen tells a story in more ways than one, especially more than just the main action happening at any particular moment. Cinematography relies heavily on the framing of the shot, the blocking or rehearsed movements of the cameras or actors, and the mise-en-scene, which is involved heavily with, you guessed it, lighting. A major tool that we can use to adjust the camera to the lighting of any particular scene, be it interior or exterior, is a light meter. Before we show you how this light meter works, it would be best to show you how a camera works. Cue the science lesson. Essentially, the reflected light off of your subject travels through the lens of your camera, and the camera sensor processes that signal 24 times per second to create a video. Now listen up, because this is important. Cinema functions on incident light metering. Essentially, you take the light from the actual sources that you're using to light your shot, instead of reflected light metering, which is what you might see on cell phones. You know sometimes when you take a video on your cell phone, and sometimes when you're in a darker area, the camera adjusts to the darker area, and then when you go outside, the camera adjusts to the lighter area? That's reflected light metering. It's essentially averaging the light levels for the entire shot and compensating that to create an equally balanced shot. We don't want that. With cinematography, you have to have very carefully placed lights, and you can't do that with reflected light metering, so incident light metering is what you go for. Okay, enough with the science, let's see how this thing works. So the first thing that we want to talk about is ISO, which is essentially the sensitivity of your camera's sensor. Uh, right now, I'm using an ISO of about 400, so this is what it would look like if we had an ISO of 800. Here is 1600 and bringing it all the way back down to 200. So you can see the big contrast between the ISOs. You wanna make sure you have the proper ISO and that'll depend on the location that you're filming, what time of day it is, etc. So just how do we set ISO on this thing, all right? So if we pick up the L398A, we can see ISO right here and then a little window with numbers, all right? So this is what you use to determine your ISO. So now you'll notice some numbers here along with lines uh, followed by the word cine. Below that, there is some numbers with one divided by second. That's frame rates and then shutter speed, all right? So for in the typical uh, cinema industry, we'll use 24 frames per second and a 50th shutter speed. So whatever that line juts out to, these numbers on the bottom are your f-stop, all right? So these can vary based on the light metering that you get up here and your exposure, all right? And then up here, these numbers on the top with the needle, those are measured in what's called foot candles. And these will help you determine how bright your lights are and subsequently how to set up your camera with the proper f-stop. So now let's calibrate this thing so we can set it up for a shot. Let's push down on this middle button. See, it pops out now, and now the needle is stuck. All right, so what I like to do to set up for a shot is I like to press the needle down, cover this part here. This is called the lumosphere. So cover that up so when it reaches zero, then you can take your hand off. And now we're almost at zero, we're very close enough. So now we can turn this dial so that it's at zero, and now we can take our shot, okay? So now let's go and take a shot and see what kind of readings we get. The lumosphere can be turned so that it is facing the camera. Make sure the lumosphere is always facing the camera, but you can see the readings in foot candles. That's what these numbers are up here, foot candles, the measurement that you take of the incident reading. So you hold the button down, and on this side, I'm getting about 40 foot candles. Behind the shadow, I'm getting almost no foot candles. In the middle, I'm getting about 20. So we're gonna come back to this shot. We're gonna come back to this place once we figure out the f-stops for the certain areas of the shot. But now, let's take a look at how we can calculate the f-stop. So if we go back to our 40 and we line up, there is a little red arrow here. I don't know if you can see it. If you line up this little red arrow here, just as a reference point. So in this case, let's use an ISO of about 1600. So we put 40 here, 40 foot candles. This black arrow essentially coordinates with this red arrow. We're at 40 foot candles, ISO 1600, 24 frames per second at a 50th shutter speed. We're gonna get an f-stop of about 5.6. If we decided to put that down to 20 for the in-between, now we'd need an f-stop of about four. If we 
decided to put it all the way down to zero, which was the shadow portion, we need an f-stop between f2 and 1.4. So if I turn this down to f5, this is the lowest f-stop that is available on my camera. If I turn this up to f5.6, that's right in the middle. f6.3, it's a little bit darker. So going back to the 5.6, it's the perfectly balanced shot, taking the highest foot candle reading and making that a nice and balanced shot. I'm gonna share why I chose this analog light meter for a couple reasons. One, if you're on a long film shoot, batteries is the last thing you wanna be worrying about. So having something that does not rely on battery power is very, very useful. And this is a pretty easy thing to figure out once you get the hang of it. Number two, versatility. In the package that comes with this thing, you have several interchangeable lumispheres depending on which levels of light that you're in. And so if you wanna do a different level of light during the day, this is a great thing to interchange. All right, so in conclusion, Light matters. As a cinematographer or gaffer, the lighting that you choose can only look good on camera. It should also reflect the director's vision for the entire piece, and using a light meter to help you tell that story is key. Thank you guys for watching today's video, and if you want to see more filmmaking demo videos, make sure to leave a like and comment down below. Also, please subscribe and make sure you hit that gray bell so that you get notified whenever Dream Quarter Productions posts a new video. Again, thank you guys for watching today's video, and I will see you next time.